Hai, 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 Never 
this before. And let's still that you can only get it when you come into this world. It's very good after now I'm going to show you step by step uh, what is the, the structure that we should look at to get the answer. Uh, the initial part here is uh, I want to go through uh, how people treat this issue. How do they answer it? Let's have a look. Good. The Bible has a very important message. What is meant that you, God, are so mindful of him? So Jesus said, uh, the hair of so God comes <laughs> No. So actually, the salmon, he David, he David was a salmon. He's trying to tell you, you are a very important being. You are different from cow, lion, tiger. Obviously, you are not a tree. You are something very special. And you must not only recognize how special you are, but also why you came into this world. So I did get all those people who love Sorry, but you know why I put this? Before this world, uh, God uh, never know what is love. He came, you come, I come to find out what is love. That's never existed before. So I purposely put this. Just to take a look at it, the river is see more and more why I love is so important. You know. so, this is the outline of uh, the top. Uh. We are going to begin, have a look at the Eustace controversy. Then we are going to look at the scripture to find out the immortal active from the Bible, the many Christians do not know. The Bible talks about the immortals in you. Of course, it's the Hindu Buddhist concept of Rupa Kaya, Dharma Kaya. Now, this is the one, how I feel going to develop a thing come in this world for. That thing has never existed before. The Bible call it armor of God. But the Hindu media call it the shining body. Sometimes you call it the white raiment. Actually, this is the thing that we come here to that now. That's never existed before. We come here, everyone on earth, to produce this white raiment to produce uh, this armor of God. Then after that, uh, you run the race. How do you get the best armor? And part of the answer to the issue of what is the purpose of life, what is the origin of you? And you are going to learn this one. This one, uh, how God Sorry, it's by never Then I'm going to the top of it. The hour of here. When well, you want to have a practical realization of the purpose of life, 
you look at step 3 and 4, this is starting, starting and third lecture. And afternoon, uh, we'll talk more about this thing. The next one, uh, how, when you get acknowledged, how are you going to apply? Remember one thing, uh, no use learning uh, if there is no application. So we must try to figure out uh, this kind of information, uh, how useful it can be. <laughs> Okay, this is what uh, Papa and you read this one for, for them to know. It's from the Bible. Uh, mm -hmm. For the blue one, produce your cause, saith Jehovah. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the King of Jacob. Let them bring forth and declare unto us what shall happen. Declare ye the former things, what they are, what we may consider them, and know the latter end of them, or show us things to come. Declare the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye no, are our no, no, no. gods. Yea, do good or do evil, what we may be dismayed, surprised, and behold it together. This is God speaking to us. Huh? He said that when you believe a thing, uh, you better prove it. Uh, but the underline, uh, what? Because you are God. The sort of Christian, you know, they're like, the Bible says, you are God. You can do good and evil. So you better think before you do anything. It's very surprising, you know. That in the Old Testament, we have this kind of person. But a Christian will never read this line and say, Declare that now you know we are God, you are God, you can do good and evil. But when they place up, no offensive argument, show the practical application. Also, I'm a Christian, I want to, I mean, Buddha actually gave uh, the best particular definition of what is the purpose of life. But unfortunately, his explanations are not easily cut even by Buddhists. If you ask him uh, what is the purpose of life, he will give you only one sentence. What is the sentence? Just Dharma hit you, Prabhupada. That is the answer. That is us, Pariya. We will deal with that later. In just three words, huh? The first two disciples of Buddha realized what Buddha was trying to say. You know. But I will tell you in brief uh, what this word means. Uh. This word means that uh, whatever is an action, it has a call. It's a call action thing. You know, okay. Now, let me go back to the previous passage. Uh. After evaluating, you will know whether to do good or evil. Because whatever is good or evil, they have causes, you know. So the Bible also says, whatever you do, please think what are the causes. Then you can control uh, what are the results. And then, uh, It's a state of Dharma into Prabhava. Dharma means that the truth, uh, so the truth is every action has a call. It's a state that, that what these ancient sages are very terrible in. Please look before you live. Uh, you must think uh, what is the consequence before you do the action. 
action. That actually is what we come to this world to learn. This world uh, is your case study. <laughs> Don't play <get> around. <laughs> okay, we have a useless controversy. Uh, you ask many of this so called master, you will surprise uh, how they answer. And I have discussed with Jake, and we have very good laugh uh, over how various master answered the question. Anyway, uh, no matter what is the argument, I want to affirm uh, the great religion all have the same answer, and the answer are very beautiful, very wonderful. You know. Okay, it's a signing. I tell you the story. But I don't really understand. When I was a freshman in the university, uh, there was this Indian man, uh, my classmate. Uh, he looked at me and said, hey, oh, I know you are actually very religious. Me, I ask you one question. So I said, go ahead. He asked me, uh, uh, you believe in hell, is it? So I told him, I know what you're trying to say, but I'm going to tell you that uh, I don't believe in hell. <laughs> ha! Uh, you are a Christian, say? Yeah, I'm a Christian. But all Christians believe in hell. I said, no, my father is a Christian. <laughs> and then he said, you know why I asked you this? But actually, uh, many people, when they follow God, uh, what do you think they follow God? Uh, I said, well, they believe in God. Uh, no, no, I said, I'm not yet, Pastor. She said, oh, no, no, no. Actually, I scared to go to hell. Just imagine, you see, you think that they are so painful, right? Imagine having the torture, you will fry the hell over fire. And it's not one hour, it's a whole eternity, you know. So you say, uh, before you think about hell, you say, I think I better go away <laughs> God. But I said for you, uh, you told me one thing, uh, now I know uh, you are really religious. Uh, but you told me uh, the rest, uh, he used this word, uh, I actually hypocrite, he used this word. You know. said they don't really believe in God, they are afraid of being tortured in hell. You know. His answer is not said something, you know. Many Christian ministers, even the Muslim minister and many Christians, they try to frighten you to believe in God by using hell. So they say your purpose of in life is to obey God. So simple like that. Why? Then you won't go to hell. That is how you sometimes don't realize why many people pray to God. I, I was working with Tansi Mohammed Jamal, Director General of Agriculture. He's very scared of God. You know. You see, the Quran, because they believe in God. You know. Because you don't believe in the time of judgment, he will send you to hell. <laughs> So, uh, fear of hell, uh, how to avoid going to hell, uh, is the purpose of those religious people. <laughs> but uh, I think you and I are not to find this kind of argument. Uh, no. Okay. A Christian reject you in this song. Uh, you find your purpose in Jesus Christ. Uh, Warm and and she still uh, Now I find this, although I'm a Christian, uh, I find it crap, I was telling you. It, it really gets no answer. Now I must tell you, I shared all the articles I found. There's one Indian man, he gets a very good answer. He says, uh, Our life uh, is a training ground. I think this man really intelligent. 
Say God sent us to learn and grow through experience. Blessing of painful. He let us choose between good and evil. He let us decide. And say, whether we will serve others or not, or are we going to be selfish? This answer, Pastor uh, Nima, is beautiful. Yes. The Indian and a lot of Christian. So sometimes I'm shy uh, as a Christian to buy a Beautiful answer for non-Christian. I don't believe in God sending you. <laughs> you yourself, sending yourself. Hey, yeah, like, you said, you said that we need this to answer. But I will explain that you will find this answer very true. You will find by the But many people, you don't know it, when they ask them, they say, do good, do good. Now, this kind of answer I find. Yet yeah, has some uses, whether it's right or wrong, you see. That is, I can tell you, uh, do good, do good. I think it's good, uh, but it is not satisfactory for our purpose, our concept. What is good? Uh, uh, you are right, what is good? So, when you say do good, you have got a very good point. Uh, you, kill, you kill somebody. What is good? Because you need to feed uh, the children. Is that good? Yeah, the Muslims say one different, but some major different from a Christian, from Buddhist. If you are right, the <laughs> definition of good is part of your journey in the purpose of life. There's no point talking about purpose of life when you cannot find an objective definition of good. But the ancient religion will tell you how to define the good. And the astonishing thing is the Gita, the Bible, the Buddhist, they say the same definition. You will see, it. I think lesson number two will come to that lesson. You are right, what is good? What? But anyway, this one I think not too bad. Uh. Go to the I encourage people not to do evil. <laughs> we give it 4 out of 10. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you must categorize the answer. Some people give a very clever answer, like just that one. Some people give every answer. Some people give stupid answer. <laughs> so you must differentiate. Now, what can Russell say? Uh, don't ask too many questions. Uh, there is no God. Say uh, the existence of evil. Uh, you ask, is God a sadist uh, or a useless? Uh, whatever purpose of life you want to have, you have to answer why there is suffering. I think uh, on the average now, this uh, 80 to 90 percent of the world are suffering. <laughs> of them, there is some very filthy rich people. Uh, they think they are not suffering. I repeat, 90 percent, 80 percent know they are suffering and they are struggling. The other 10% they think they are not suffering. But that was not what I say. You know? No, actually 100% are suffering, but 90% know they are suffering. But the other 10% they think they are not. <laughs> the okay, we are going to look at the opinion. Oh, certain famous people. So can you know this fella? Jiri uh, Krishna Moti. The very famous Indian philosopher. You read what he says that? Even philosophers are mired in the quest about life. 
in the movement of such internal societies or the religious body, hoping thereby to find release of whiteness, and we are soon caught and meshed in the drop mask, belief, pictures, devils, and sanctions of that religion. So the search has led nowhere, only to a series of inward and outward conflicts, adjustments, and conformity to a pattern. Not knowing what it's all about, we look to somebody else to tell us the purpose of life. So, he, I keep saying, he doesn't know, but he said, when we all want to find out, and people just ask another person, another person, nobody knows. Then another philosopher, also Indian, now Tony English read, said Guru. If you were very peaceful and aesthetic to every moment, will you think what is the purpose of life? No, only when in some way life has become burdensome. This question arises to be or not to be. It is a good enough purpose for me to exist. Your experience of life itself has not become grand and worthwhile. Enough. That's why you are trying to find a meaning. You just sitting here and breathing what's aesthetic for you. You wouldn't would ask what is the purpose of life. So, what is the purpose of life? This question arises because we have not experienced the value of action. We have not experienced the natural nature of your being. That's why you are asking what is the purpose? What should I do to make this life meaningful? You don't have to do, to do anything. Just being alive is great enough. So I say, don't ask that stupid question. Just stay alive. <laughs> uh, I'm not afraid of you. Let's go now. Jerry Krishnamurti has passed away long time. Smith is still around. Then I'll have a uh, next one. And you notice know, they are all Indian. Why are you interested in this? Beloved Osho. What is the goal of life? Why is there a desire to continue to live forever? Also, there is no goal of life. For the simple reason that life is its own goal. The goal is intrinsic, not something outside, not that far away, but here now in this very moment. The very idea of goal is future-oriented. Life is not a business. It does not exist for any particular end. It exists for the sheer joy of existing. There is no goal such as, hence, the moment you have achieved silence, meditativeness, awareness, faithfulness, and you are capable of living the moment yeah. and the moment. And there is no goal, yeah. no end. To live passionately in that moment is a blessing unto itself. So, uh, if you ask many people, they are all there. They say, I don't know. But it's three idiots to tell you there is no purpose of life. Just go and live. The very danger, they will confuse you. <laughs> now, why is it they say there is no purpose of life? Or what they do not know? See how. <coughs> why is it they say that? the real reason is they do not believe in God? Now, I will show you one. Uh, they say they don't believe in God. Just look at the, that thing. The word God is just a memory, intellectual, all this is not God. The word is not real. So, Jiri Krishna Mundi don't believe in God. And then this side was. <laughs> They are people who believe in God, people who display. They all argue about this or that, which they do not know. They have lost the basic quality of life. I do not know. If you do not admit, I do not know. So, he doesn't believe in God. But he believes in Shiva. <laughs> that the next fella is the worst. <laughs> See, uh, this fella brought the axiom. He'll just tell you, uh, I know God don't exist, and thank God he does not exist. <laughs> so, that is how, why these people don't know the purpose. 
He killed his wife. I don't know if I can see her. Uh, he really killed his wife. And then he pretended that his wife uh, was meditating and went to heaven. <laughs> uh, that's a long story. This one shows uh, many answers. Don't look at it. Uh, simply, uh, I have observed all kinds of answers. Uh, the assistant theories, uh, the atheists, uh, all this. So somewhere you ask the person uh, more confession. Stop uh, <laughs> trying to find a minute, just leave. That is a uh, side guru and uh, then. But <laughs> <It's wrong. laughs> Before I come to the answer, I think you have to look at what people say here. Yeah, version of answer. Then you can see whether it's right or wrong. The Sudan Buddha said you must find the relationship between the action and the cause. So when you put an argument, I won't say you are wrong, I want to listen. Okay, tell me what is your argument. Let me listen to you. Blah, blah, blah. Then I evaluate and then he said, Papa, or not. It's very good. Uh, I will join his gang. If he is wrong, uh, I have to decide whether I should tell him if he is wrong or not. If I don't like for that, I will say, Tony, are you all right? Uh? <laughs> but you see, the way you do the action, Depend on many factors. Truth is important. Prudence is another one. Look at, you may give the bread and the, the other guy will fly into a temple. <laughs> and then there will be a big fight. And then, so you must be very, very attentive. Ah, uh, I thought you did this one. One motivation definition is part of the problem is the concept of life purpose itself. The idea that we were each born for some higher purpose and it's now our cosmic mission to find it. This is the same kind of shitty logic used to justify things. Here's the truth. We exist on this earth for some undetermined period of time. During that time, we do things. Some of these things are important. Some of them are unimportant. And those important things give our lives meaning and happiness. The unimportant ones basically just kill time. So when people say, what should I do with my life? Or what is my life's purpose? What they are actually asking is, what can I do with my time that is important? Stumps, but <laughs> the answer is yellow. <laughs> but obviously, this fellow, he doesn't believe in God. Or oh, rather, God uh, is small in his life. Yeah. It also means he doesn't know. <laughs> so he tries to give an intelligent answer. Like this. Now, I find this thing just do what it's right. It's very motivational, it's good. But please go beyond that. Uh, go beyond that. Because uh, you are not a human being, you are immortal in a human body. I repeat, you are not a human being. You are an immortal in a human body. Now we are going to come to we are going to put all this controversy back on. We must answer why there is suffering. 
One major religion Buddhism is entirely about suffering. He said, this, Buddha said, the canary word is suffering. The canary word is the cause of suffering. And let's find out how to break the cause of suffering. That is what Buddha is trying to tell. In other words, you must find out what is good and evil. Then we will know what should be done to destroy the evil and foster the good. You must know first what is good and evil. You cannot say, I think this is good, I think that's evil. <laughs> so, how do you find the answer? It's fear. Uh, <laughs> logical theologian will tell you don't think about it. Is it? <laughs> because they refuse to ask God for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, many years have always been this God. Hey, why are you so silent? There's so many funny things going on in the world. You better let me know. So, uh, the answer to the purpose of life, you also have to ask, where do you come from? Why am I here? What happened if I die? Where are we going? Uh, this is an endless issue. Okay. If you answer the question of purpose of life, you must also answer this question where I come from, why am I here? What will happen after I die? Is there a reincarnation? Or are you gone forever? Are you going to go to a nice heaven? Or are you in danger of a dark hell? It's you must find the answer. If you can answer the question, how God led to suffering, you have found the answer. <laughs> but my you are ask the Rinpoche, what is the answer? <laughs> you know what the Rinpoche? Dr. Lim is my Rinpoche. Because he taught me many things. He taught me what I do see. But I am your Rinpoche because I am now your teacher. So the word Rinpoche means honorable teacher. It's good because you have the knowledge sometimes. You don't know things. You try to find a master who knows. And then ask the brother. But where is the master? The master is your scripture. That one, one type of one group of master. They are in the scripture. You ask where is Buddha? Buddha is in the Sutra. Where is Jesus? Jesus is in the Bible. Where is Vishnu? Vishnu is in the Lila. Actually, you can ask them through the scripture. So, I want to point out what is the particular purpose. People have thought, scientists have done research. They found that major problem of a depression is we have a lot of direction in life. They find disturbances in their experience and relationship and in terms of their meaningful origin. As the sense of purpose decline, they become more and more depressed you now. In other words, the participants seem to think losing a sense of purpose called depression. So I would like to say that uh, this present doctor may have medical therapy value. If you know the answer, you can help many lonely people, many different people, by telling them, hey, you are depressed. Uh, Come and have beer with me here. Yeah. You cannot ask that you are stuck in here. Hey, come and have beer with me here. Yeah. And then after that, that's a certain sweet cake. Uh, hey, you're not thinking anything, you know. Make him happy for it. And then after that, uh, you talk to him. <coughs> right? You gain the confidence that, hey, you can do it. I got some other nice news for you, you know. You know what? Who you are, you know. Uh, then I can show you. You are God. I'm God. If you can you're catching that question, uh, 
you will be able to save him. Now you are happy, you know I'm not. I can just explain to you everything. Now at the end of the day, you should worship Buddha more. Papa, I think you should worship Jesus more. Then you are done with Buddha. So this prophet Sanjay has medical telepathy when you are not in one hand. A common symptom of depression is the absence of purpose and meaning in life. Now, I'm not going to read it out. But you see, actually, medical experts know many problems about depression. They, they feel useless. They feel lost. Therefore, you must uh, Equip yourself uh, with knowledge of how to answer the questions for them. Now I repeat that. Uh, don't just check them and try to argue with them. No. Tony, uh, let's go for a break. Uh, what is your favorite beer? <laughs> no, no. What's the song? Uh, <laughs> you can start your own uh, platform boxing ring to help them. Remember one thing, uh, the depressed people are not psycho, you know. They are gods like you, you know. It's just that you know you are God, but they still did not wake up. <laughs> I corrupted the sentence. The first step to answer the purpose of life is to find out who you are. And the Bhagavad Gita says, uh, There was never a time when I was not. No doubt. No different or not. There was never a time when we shall kiss to be. It's spoken by the God Krishna, the Arjuna, the hero of the Mahabharata. They say, Kakari, we have always been, you are never born and we will never die. Tari, we were never born, we have always exist and we will never die. That's why I say, you are immortal one, what are you doing in this world of suffering? In some way, the suffering is very important for you this world. The suffering was non-existent in the previous life. That means that in some way, the suffering are important. We have come to that. But now, uh, yeah, yeah, I was never born now. It's very strange. <laughs> the Hindu and Buddhist believe that you have a Rupa Kaya, this is the physical body. Then you must not have a Yama Kaya. There are two parts to this. One is the, the wisdom body of Yama. The other one is the, your spirit. You is this one, but Dhammakaya is changeable. The reality is non changeable, but the reality is you, which something you see the morning, the evening, it is the reality in you, the immortal thing in you. But now it's Rupa Kaya, it's your hand, your leg. Then the tongue found the way to Pani Mokha for Mahayana. Then it said, You have a beautiful Rupa Kaya, the 80 minus sign, the two major sign of a great man. 
Let's go on around. If you go to the gym, you develop muscle. We have a very beautiful body. That is the two mark of the chakra body. We can possess huge psychic power. We can cause fire to come out. That is the 32 mark. So your Rupa Kaya also has a psychic component. But they are mortal. One day, they die. They will disappear. But the other one, Dharma Kaya, inside you. <coughs> it learns Sila Samadhi. Blinded virtue is Dharma Kaya. You will resonate with Sila Samadhi. This is Samadhi meditation, thinking, mental activity. So your shell, you, the reality, you are actually compatible with thought, feeling, meditation. That is your, your food, you see. But your Rupa Kaya is Tabo Haji, Putin, Pat, and then you don't have master, and then some bullet takes shortcut, it takes steroids, you see. Again, it's just to show you that Dharma Kaya depends on a collection of practice. Dharma. So actually, the ancient Hindu, the Buddhist, no. Dharma is a living thing. We thought Dharma is just some abstract words. The moral law, we always think it's very abstract. But actually, this moral law is a living entity, it's a spiritual entity, only you cannot see. This entity is the one that has always existed. It flows uh, thousands of years ago. It is now in this room, you know. And uh, it may incarnate in one of you, you know, say. It may come down, you may touch it up. That's like a computer. Now you check the cloud. So the body dharma too is just like a cloud. In fact, it is a cloud. A spiritual cloud. The computer cloud is just hanging data in the air. So when you clean, you can download a pornography. You can download action picture. You can download educational picture. Same with the Dharma, that you must activate the code to bring down the Dharma or the trust. I try to do a little uh, definition to show you who you are. The Dharma in your life, only some mind of a full and Latin being is free of all covering. It meditatively absorbs the perception of emptiness, of recognizing all phenomena. This is the collection of wisdom. This, however, is the physical body. But it means that you exercise, you run a race, you do physical action to build Rupa Kaya. You do spiritual action to build Dharma Kaya. But the Bible says this now. Very, very nice, the Bible was. I discussed with Chen and Chen helped me to develop a uh, thing. <laughs> now the Bible says, uh, God, in the very beginning of the Bible, uh, God formed man out of the dust. And he breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and then man became a living soul. So this first showed that man was created from the dark. That is our Rupakaya. But the breath comes from God, it is the spirit. When these two combine, it becomes the soul. So uh, this is the formula. This is 
lupa kaya. Ye, jama kaya. Beda tu kan beda. Eh, no soul. So, the Bible here very similar thing. It just that the term they use or are different. But this is show the correlation. The Buddhist Hindu will say Dharma Kaya Bhutan, Upa Kaya Bhutan. This is the first star. The dark is Upa Kaya. Breath of life is Dharma Kaya. Breath is also called the spirit of the same word. Then you have breath, spirit again. So this is the spirit, this is you, you know, and you have Dhammakaya. But the body is the dasa, the body, the body is Upakaya, Bodo. Now, I will tell you a very interesting thing. You will never realize how important you are. Only you probably thought you are just a child of your parents. You are more than that, you know. Confucius said, when you die, when the body is older, Confucius said, the key to the issue of thought manifests itself as a shining light. But the body is uh, wrong. <laughs> Your spirit comes from God. The Hindu call God Brahman, the formless. Who is also called God? The formula. But if in the Bible you say God, God also is formula. Then one of the main incarnation, the Bible calls him Jesus Christ. But in the Buddhist one, one of the major incarnation was Sukha Muni Buddha. Okay? So you find that uh, real life is the number one tone. You are from God. Your parents are really the custodian. They are the whole power coming from God and you are born. The only thing your parents supply you is the flesh, which is controlled by Yanjin. So Yanjin will make you handsome. I'm telling you this, we're going to make stuff. But the other part of you doesn't come from the parent, it comes from God. So Dr. Lee, God actually is your spiritual ancestor. Your parents are your physical ancestor. Your grandfather are your physical ancestor. But God is your spiritual ancestor. So now we want to know why you come here in the world of suffering. You can answer this, uh, you have found the purpose. Uh. Okay, but this is a very good one. Uh. I talked with uh, uh, Chen. You know, the Bible says uh, when you are born, uh, God takes the dark from your parents. Uh, Break this into your life and you become a living soul. This, of course, is the gestation period of the fetus inside the stomach. Now, Doctor, how does God enter your life? How does God do this? Every time before a baby born, 
God actually came into the womb of your parents and put the breath of life. This is what you don't know. A Christian does not do this. Faith is an after every time a baby is born. Baula, this is how you are born. God put a bit of himself into you as the, the breath of life. Made with the body from your parents, you become a living soul. Millions of people have been born. Every time each of these people are born, God interferes with the womb. So, totally, I don't think anybody has realized this before. But it came up because I love meditative discussion with him. And uh, we found out all this mystery. No. Well, uh, is there any other evidence that this is so? Uh, see, uh, about this phenomenon where God interfered the world, uh, surprisingly, is found in some. He was key to a little bit it. Remember, you are looking for something. Uh, uh, and then you, your friend gave you this verse. Now you are a Christian. You read this psalm. For thou didst form my inner parts. Thou didst cover me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks unto thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My frame was not hidden from thee, when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thy eyes, thy eyes did see my unformed substance, and in thy book they were all written. Even the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was none of them. So the psalmist point out, God interfered with your mother's womb, and that's how you are born. This support this up. I was surprised myself, I never realized it until show me the pearl. Now I was thinking, hey, how come I never realized it? Now this is also mentioned in another scripture, not in the Bible. Uh, you will read this one. Read up. Read the un This universe, the womb, is where the plant seed of all lives. Then the springs of India comes close to all beings. Ushu, Kundi, son, mother's each mortal form, Brahma conceives, and I am he, the father's sending seed. So the Bahamakita mentioned God plant the seed in the womb. The Bible of Psalmist also says the same thing. Every time you are born, uh, God interferes with the womb. <laughs> Every time a person is born, God incarnate in you. <clears throat> but Kunti Sat is Arjuna, the hero Arjuna. So Krishna told Arjuna, don't be stupid. I plant the seed of all life. I'm the one. I call and the one. So see now why envy is so, so precious. Because everyone on earth is from God. You must self-realize uh, who you are. You are part of God. It's a last slide for you all. But you should ask to say this one. I was talking to Dr. Lin Lahatanga. If you are only a biological organism, flesh, the moment you die, the DNA will show you the subject. 
compare the impact of with the info bar is the correspondence of Buddha said it. This is Jesus said it. They are the same, you know. And the chances is uh, one in uh, 
The passage says somebody will use this eight standard of righteousness. Who is it? Kabiola. Yes. God will use this eight standard. Who will he apply to? Son of God. Astounding. In other words, the day will come where all of us uh, will be assembled from a Purusa, the formless being, uh, he will check us by using the standard. And she will say, Can you will golden feeling. It's Can you are chicken. But never mind, go to the surgery chamber. Come on, we don't want to feel it. <laughs> we can't take the plastic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> so the Guru said, you chat, you are, you are the God. You are God, then I can say you are God. <laughs> but then, that's how I get the information. I want the scripture to, to even support each other. The most support I get, uh, I won't say I'm 100% correct, uh, but I'm more confident. Uh, more confident. Uh. <laughs> Can you say more confident? Yes. I just tell you, uh, Buddha mentioned in the Samyutta Nikaya. Among the sacrifice, I mean, how that fire worship is the most important. Among the song, it is Sabatri, it is Gayatri Mantra. Yes. Sabatri is the core of the Gayatri Mantra. I don't read, I just want to show you. The Vida has this Gayatri Mantra song. But, uh, the seven eight chakra are uh, identified by the god. So they call Indra, Varuna, one, two, or eh? What's that? This is number three. This is Jupiter, King Jupiter. The first part of the Gayatri Mantra will identify three gods. Oh. Then it follows. You have a Pusa. This is the god that carries the soul to heaven. This is Savati. This is the morning god. This is Buddha. This is Jesus Christ. They are the son of the morning. Then uh, you have Soma and the Stick, then you have Mitra and the Seven. So the Gajan Mantra sing prison to seven divine qualities and pair them to seven gods. Now you don't read it. all I want to show you is this. You compare uh, the Gajan Mantra with the, the Pentateuch, you will find uh, they are the same. So you see, Jesus said, Buddha also said the same thing. Buddha also said the same thing. Can we copy, copy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I purpose to show you this, but I don't want any religion to say, ah, uh, my religion, they say the same thing. I will say, yeah, your religion also say the same beautiful thing. <laughs> Ah, uh, papa, sometimes Christians are too, too much. <laughs> <laughs> so you like it or not? No. All invitation to that. One of the reasons why I can see and compare is that my statistic is very, very good. Uh, when I was in Madi, they all know I'm a very strong scientist. Yes, so I will compare. 
The meaning is one thing now. It's more important to see, are there any correspondent movement? They are coming towards the end. Statistical proof of correspondent movement. But it says the same thing. Info pass the same thing. The media also says the same thing. What it shows is that all this form God, you know, God is made of woods, you know. Your armor of God will be made of the same material. I think you must talk together. You go for it. What? Yeah. Uh, solution. That long question of time. We are going to deal, we are going to See, I was saying earlier, this reincarnation one, which is a very touchy subject, huh? In uh, the afternoon, I have a number of slides to show you what the ancient state a lot of reincarnation. But I will now tell you one thing. Many top Buddhist scholars, they don't believe in reincarnation, but they believe in rebirth. But you might not know what they are talking about. This afternoon, I will try to deal with this one. Maybe Buddhist scholar don't believe in reincarnation. So this is a to be a surprise. Huh? Jay, that man does not believe in reincarnation. Remember your video one? Oh. Uh, the Tanya Manta, he doesn't believe in reincarnation, he's a Buddhist monk. He gave a video on reincarnation. He asked him, yeah, yeah. you stay inside that, there's no reincarnation, but there is rebirth. But the same must know what they are talking about. This afternoon, hopefully, I cover. Sorry, yeah. They said, come, we're going to go for lunch first, then we'll come back. Always good to hear 